Armorjet owes a lot to both Quake and Unreal Tournament. These games birthed the arena shooter genre after all, and so are kind of like great grandparents to Armorjet. Beyond this, one of Armorjet's lead developers is an Unreal Tournament pro champion. If you've noticed that the forest skins are misspelled, it's because this is an homage to Nicola Forest Goretti. New pilots starting in Armorjet are given three primary weapons to enter the arena with. Now, two of these are fairly standard. I don't think many people get confused by a fully automatic assault rifle or a sniper rifle, but the third is a little more unusual. When is a shotgun not a shotgun? When it's an Unreal Tournament flat cannon in disguise. It's time then for a loadout lowdown. Ahoy! Captain Benzie here, coming at you with a loadout lowdown in association with Fiery Tail's Armor Jet team. This series aims to take a close look at the Armor Jet Armory to help you rocket up the Valor Leagues like a firecracker. <laughs> Before we dive in, this series is supported solely via YouTube ad revenue and by a small crew of exceptional people. If you want to support this channel, please let the ads play out fully or come join my crew on Patreon. Of course, giving the video a thumbs up, subscribing and sharing this video with your friends is amazingly helpful too. With that out of the way, let's take a look at the Tremor. Although the game refers to the Tremor as a shotgun, I think this is a bit misleading. If you want to play a true shotgun experience, jetting insanely close to the enemy, looking them in the eye and then unloading a shotgun blast through their ribcage, go grab a Dominion or Lycan. As long as you're in my class, we call the Tremor what it is, a flak cannon. Now, if you've played the Unreal Tournament series of games, you'll recognize that the Tremor is not a true shotgun. Like the Flak Cannon, the Tremor fires a blast of Flak projectiles that bounce off walls, ceiling, and the floor. And it's mastering these projectiles and their movement that makes a Tremor pilot stand out. Again, if you want to play a brain-dead frontliner, then the Tremor ain't for you. If you're still here, awesome. Let's take a look at how these Flak projectiles work. Each of the four flak projectiles that the Tremor launches deals 20 damage, and they spread out the further they fly. This means that if you crack off a shot at point-blank range and hit with all four of them, the Tremor will do a solid whack of 80 damage. When you spawn fresh into the arena, doe-dyed and ready to commit mass murder, you have 100 HP. Just see the issue here. Without a double damage power-up, the Tremor isn't ever going to one-shot an enemy pilot that hasn't already taken a bit of a beating in getting to you, let alone one with a shield, whereas a true shotgun, like the Dominion, can. What the Tremor lacks in one-shot potential, it does make up for in swathes of versatility. For starters, this thing actually has a range value to it. You don't need to get so close that you can smell your opponent's unwashed armpits. Thank God, this ain't TwitchCon, people. Sure, you might be looking at me sideways right now, thinking that I've finally taken a few too many nades to the skull. Didn't I just say that the shots spread out over range? Well, yeah, but there's a few applications for that. Firstly, your friendly sniper has just shot an opponent with his long claw. They've taken damage, but they're alive. Barely. Then you, clever little scamp that you are, unload your tremor in their direction. It doesn't matter which way our hapless opponent wants to go, chances are that a flak projectile is about to embed itself somewhere soft and chew off the last of that health bar like a rabid puppy. Secondly, these projectiles bounce. If you aim at the floor in front of your target, then all four flak projectiles can bounce back up and through their shins. Sure, it's only 80 damage, but that's enough of a bite to take out almost any wounded opponent. Watch the battlefield and play the role of a sort of Valkyrie, I suppose. Instead of swooping across the battlefield to claim the worthy, you're just swooping to claim. The thing is, whereas most midline and backline weapons suffer if an opponent gets right up into their grill, the Tremor can still do that whole point-blank snap of 80 damage, making it surprisingly dangerous to engage at close quarters. Once you understand how the flak projectiles move and interact with the scenery, you can become a very dangerous pilot indeed, capable of mopping up entire teams in very short timeframes. Of course, this does have the downside of making the Tremor fairly map dependent. On one hand, the tight spaces and narrow lanes of maps like Snowbase, Moon and Magma make for excellent hunting grounds. You can bounce the flak off the walls, floors and ceilings as required. On the other hand, the wide open areas on Canyon and pretty much the entirety of the Temple map don't do so well for you, as there's just simply nothing to bounce your shots off. Is the Tremor terrible on these maps? No, 
it'll still get the job done, but it's not the dominant force it otherwise could be. It's less a tremor and more like a strong wobble. The fact that the tremor requires a teensy bit of help to take out opponents in one shot means that you could often be at the mercy of your possibly useless teammates. Fortunately, the tremor truly shines as a mop, a weapon for cleaning up the injured. As long as your teammates are occasionally hitting something, you should always have a target to blast. A tremor with double damage, however, is suddenly a force to be reckoned with. The full 4 goes from a solid 80 to a concrete bone-breaking 160, the difference between not killing an unharmed opponent and one-shotting a shielded one. And even the individual flak projectiles going up to 40 damage is noticeable. Suddenly, a wide-angle shot isn't just the best way to take a photo of what remains of the enemy team after a direct hit from a boosted tremor, it's also a cloud of pain for anyone coming at you. Seriously, the Tremor is one of the better weapons to give the double damage power up to, as the weapon goes from being able to mop up an entire team of wounded opponents to being able to wipe an entire darn team on its own. Secondary weapons can make all the difference here too, and fittingly enough, my personal favourite is also always available. It's the Humble Frag Grenade. Trust me, the fun you can have launching a frag grenade into a group of pilots as you pull the trigger on your tremor. It looks like you've just one-shot them into bloody chunks, spectacularly, and feels unbelievably satisfying to pull off. The curved trajectory and small amount of bounce also fit with the tremor, making it easier to aim the two together. Now you can use sidearms for that little bit of extra damage to a single opponent, but I do find that the straight shot is harder to aim with the tremor's curve, and the fact that it can only hit one target at a time, eh, that's disappointingly lacking in versatility for me. The same goes for the sticky grenade and the proximity mine. Great secondaries in their own right, but they just don't add to the tremor like a frag grenade does. Now an EMP grenade isn't without merit, but again, I just find the frag a better all-round secondary. If you absolutely have to change it up from a frag, the EMP would be my next suggestion. As for ultimates, there are a few that can do some good work here. Fittingly enough, yet again, the starting one, Exo Super Speed, can be great for manoeuvring into position, punching someone with the tremor, and then moving away to safety. And the trigger happy can be a great laugh too, as the tremor's 80 damage suddenly is quite scary when you're firing twice as many shots. I personally quite like using the Napalm Airstrike as an ultimate, as the incidental damage that the fire causes can often be enough to bring your prey into that 80 health danger zone, but the regular strike, the drones and the turrets can all do very well too for racking up the kills. The tremor has a plethora of unique skins, each with their own references. The Quake is probably one of the most obvious references in Armorjet. I mentioned at the start of this video that Armorjet owes a lot to a certain game series that started the whole arena shooter genre. Yes, that's id Software's 1996 masterpiece, Quake. The series that revolutionised first person shooters and pretty much invented the concept of a deathmatch would eventually go on to release Quake 3 Arena, arguably the purest arena shooter experience ever. If you haven't played, you really, really should. Of course, it's also a bit of a double reference, with the Tremor being a minor earthquake. <laughs> the Cleopatra is a clean-looking skin that pays homage to the Queen of Egypt. I love the humour in the flavour text on this one too. When doing research for these skins initially, I wondered what Cleopatra might have to do with anything, but if you go through her history, the changes that she made and the impact she had on history in her area was fairly... groundbreaking? <laughs> The Guardian, or Threshold Guardian as it used to be known, could be a triple reference. The colour of the weapon and the worm on the artwork seem a fitting reference to the film Tremors, though I find it also strangely reminiscent of the film Beetlejuice, with the sandworms that guard the afterlife. Finally, the colour of the weapon makes this feel closest to the original colour scheme of Unreal Tournament's flat cannon. Now this crazy looking assortment of colours is Sweet Crush, and I don't think the reference could be any more obvious if it tried. The vibrant colours, the kill card and the text all seem to strongly allude to the Match 3 game, Candy Crush. Now, Candy Crush was the first game to popularise the freemium model, using microtransactions to buy more lives to keep playing and upgrades to make the game easier. These are two microtransaction types that Super Bit Machine have sworn away from, so I guess it does kind of make sense that they'd pay ironic homage here. The Firecracker is a special skin that was given to pilots who logged in during Chinese New Year 2019, hence the gold and red colours which are synonymous with Chinese New Year. The name Firecracker is because of the firecrackers set off during the celebrations. This was also given as a matching set with the Fortune Frag, fitting, and an epic loadout if you happen to have Kruger's Hazmat skin. Finally, and my personal favourite, is the Calavera. 
This Halloween skin is exclusively in the shop for October 2019, and it's obviously referencing La Dia de los Muertos, the Day of the Dead. In this Mexican festival, celebrants often wear masks or paint their face to look like a vibrant skull, often adorned with flowers, known as a calavera. Unlike many similar celebrations, the Day of the Dead is colourful and vibrant and is seen as a joyous occasion. I feel the same when I get a killing spree on my tremor. Well, that just about wraps things up for this Loadout Lowdown video. Thanks for watching right to the end, folks. Happy sailing, and see you in the arena!